Okay, I'm here. Hello, everyone. That's my dog. He thinks someone's actually here. Why can't it? Why can't I do that? Hmm. Let's see. Hello, who's joining us? Is that Julie? <laughs> I don't know why this won't let me turn the phone. Hmm. All right, I guess we're going to do it this way. So here we are, everyone. I am live in my house, and we're going to deal with some technical issues for a moment here. Hey, Michelle. <laughs> um, so, you know, this, before I came, became a mom, I, you know, didn't respect moms quite the same way that I do now. Uh, so 20 minutes ago, my daughter had a uh, number two issue that I had to run over and resolve. <laughs> um, and then when I got home and started to set up, I realized that I forgot the one color of paint that I needed. So I had to make an SOS call to Mr. Murray at the store to rush it over and bring it to me. So thank you, John. Um, so here we are. I normally, I'm missing you, Julie. I'm missing you. Um, I normally have Julie setting all this up for me. And this is a challenge. Let's see if we can get this right. So I can show you guys what I'm working on here. So here's the table that I'm gonna be working on today. Move this over a bit. So this is a client's table. I'm gonna, see I don't like the way that looks. So you guys sent in a ton of questions for me, which I think is just so awesome. And um, true confession, I haven't even looked at them yet because like I said, I was solving poop problems. So here we go, let's see, is that better? <clears throat> okay, that's better, right? Okay, so here we go. All right, so we got my computer here. Let me get into view. All right, I got my water, okay? Got my water, I wanted to show you guys this. This was from yesterday. So I talked to you about these drops that I put in my water. Um, coconut drops from Pure. It's so good. And like I said, it doesn't have any really bad stuff in it. Low Han fruit extract and stevia leaf. So it makes it really good. It's just a couple drops. You don't need that much. So what am I using today? So I'm going to answer your questions while we're drying. Um, but I figured I would just get started a little bit on this and show you guys. So I'm going to be using Gesso White. This is from Jolie. And I'm also going to be doing, dun, 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 exciting stuff. I'm going to be doing a glaze for you guys with some um, pearly, metallic-y type paints. So first things first, I'm going to paint the base. And then I am going to wait for it to dry. I'll answer all your questions then. And then we're going to do a glaze. We're going to do a glaze with... Um, the actual paint and you know what I just realized that I didn't clean this so let me run downstairs into my basement from my own supply and I got to get some crud cutter I'll be right back hang tight shoot some questions for me on the screen while while you wait All right, I got my card cutter. I'm ready to go. I also got my shop towels, my favorite shop towels. I love these because um, they're lint free. They hold up really well, so you can use them a lot and they still, they hold up really nicely. And they just, they do a really good job. So I'm gonna spray, okay? So this is a client's table. She had actually painted this and it didn't quite go in her room. This, the um, color that she painted didn't go well in the space that she had. So she wants to redo it. By the way, her space is like absolutely gorgeous, um, but it's very light. So you can see here she did a dark top and then she did this light blue base and it really just wasn't conducive to her space. She had, she has more of like a light gray and cream space like all her trim molding is bright white. And this just, it felt really heavy and dark in the room. So it just didn't go. So um, during the pandemic here, 
she asked me if I would take care of it for her. And I thought it would be a great opportunity to jump on and show you guys uh, how to paint something. So I'm just kind of spritzing on my card cutter and I'm wiping it back. Um, she has a little bit of glue on here. Like, I don't know if you guys can see this, but it has like some screw holes in it and we're not gonna get crazy about that. Uh, the paint is gonna cover right over all of that gookiness. So I love the Jolie Matte Finish paint because it just, it covers a plethora of sins. So if you have a piece that is really dinged up or like let's say that the veneer has kind of chipped off and you have imperfections, the Jolie paint is a great paint to use because it just, it covers up all that stuff. Now, in the next few days, I'm gonna be doing some more live videos with you and I wanna show you how to use the general finishes paint and that is another line that we carry that's more of a modern finish paint. But that paint, you want to use it on things that are, you know, in better condition. Uh, because it, you will see the imperfections in that if you, if you have any. So, um, and I have to apologize. I don't have like the greatest setup here because I don't normally do this from home. <laughs> um, so the dining room table was the best place to do it in our little abode. So tomorrow, we're gonna be, we'll be announcing this after the video, but tomorrow I'm gonna be doing a house tour. Um, I'm gonna walk you around my house and show you all of the projects that I've completed in my own home with um, all of the products from our store. So, you know, I do have a very modest home but I do have a lot of projects around here. And as I was looking around today and deciding what I was gonna need to clean up before I show you guys, um, I also realized that I have some things that are really unfinished that really need to get done. So I always say that that saying, you know, the shoemaker's kids have no shoes. It is very true when it comes to your home, even when you have a home decor store. <laughs> All right, so I think we're clean. So after we clean, the next step is going to be to make sure that we stir our paint. By the way, I have a little, a little something burning here. This is one of the new candles that we just brought in. Love, love, love these. And I love the name. I know it's backwards, but it's called Suck It Up Buttercup. And that's basically the approach that I'm taking right now with life. We're living in a crazy world, but we gotta just suck it up and do it, do it to it. And I totally don't even have a can opener here. So let me grab a key. All right, so I'm gonna pop open my can here. By the way, the candles are available on our website. I promise you, I promise you, there is not one fragrance that you will not love. Um, they are amazing. So I'm really sensitive when it comes to candles because I don't like things that are really like super smelly but I also want them to smell. Um, you know, that's the whole point. So I like things that are a little bit more, you know, the overwhelming perfumey smells kind of drive me a little bit crazy, but um, all of these smells are just amazing. So what was this one? This one, this is like one of my favorites. It's got, oh gosh, that's why I love it. The warm aroma of bourbon and butter. I mean, what else could you possibly ask for? Um, so they're all delicious, but they're all of the ones on the website do have a nice description so you can kind of see what you're getting yourself into. And then what are they called? They're called uh, Milk Reclamation Barn Candles. So look for those on our website, along with, um, you know, everything else that we carry is available on the website. I mean, not everything, you know, so like some of our individual furniture and home decor pieces aren't available on the website, but um, we have a lot of home decor, faux florals, um, candles, some accessories are up there on the website. And then we do have some of our vintage goods up there just to kind of give you guys a sneak peek on what you could find in store. So, you know, just in case you're not following us and you don't know what's going on and you've just stumbled upon this video, we are currently closed in our physical location, but we are still doing curbside pickup and shipping from for our website 
So as per Governor Cuomo's executive order, if we have only one occupant in our um, business, we can still operate. So um, thank you, big thanks to John who is running the show over there. He is truly running the show. And then there's a few of us at, from home. And um, after my video went off yesterday, I realized that I didn't personally thank Michelle. She has also been um, very integral in making all of this work. So. Um, Thank you. I mean, everyone, Patty, Victoria, Jill, Pam, Dion, they're all checking in and, and you know, rooting me on. So I, I really, really, really appreciate it. Um, it means a lot. So why am I stirring this can so much? You might be asking yourself. <laughs> um, the reason why I'm stirring this can so much is because there was a little bit of a thickness on the bottom of the can, which is normal. It can absolutely happen. So if that does happen to you while you're at home painting, don't feel like you've gotten a bad batch. You just need to make sure that you really start it. And I'm kind of like really scraping the bottom of this can and um, I'm just kind of pulling it up so that I can see the consistency throughout is, you know, the same. It's consistent throughout and I'm, it's feeling pretty good now. I'm feeling pretty good about this. All right, cool. So I've got some brushes here. By the way, let me just show this to you. I have, um, this is the color chart, the Jolie paint color chart. So let me bring this a little bit closer. So these are the gorgeous colors that we have available. These are some of the whites and I'm gonna be using a color called Gesso White on this piece here. Um, some of our grays and our taupey colors. This is some of our greens and browns. Now we're getting into some of the blues and greens. Some more blues, some fun blues. And ooh, pinks, love pink, pink, purple, red, love all those. And then we also have the oranges and the creams. So lots of fun. The Jolie um, palette is super, super pretty, very soothing. We love it. Love it, love it, love it. So, um, all right, let's get started. So what am I using? I am going to be using my Jolie paintbrush. So I have a small, small signature brush, and then I also have a large. I mean, this is really a matter of preference. If you want to use a smaller brush, use a smaller brush. The larger brush is going to make it go a little bit quicker, but, um, you know, not terribly. So what I'm going to do is I'm basically just going to, I'm going to paint this on. And I'm not being in particularly <laughs> um, precise about this. I'm just kind of blobbing it on. So the whole purpose of this piece, I really, I want to get into all these grooves and crevices. So I, I'm, I think you can see it here. There's like a lot of detail and there's all detail up here. I want to get into all of these grooves and crevices because this client wants this piece to feel lighter and brighter. So I'm really gonna paint in, into all these groups and crevices. Let's see if you guys have any questions up there. I think Ju Julie's watching us too, so she might be answering your questions as we go because obviously I can't. So how's everybody feeling today? Um, you know, so I did my video with you yesterday and um, I came home to my lovely daughter and husband and my mother-in-law. I told you about my in-laws and how thankful I am for them. I told you how thankful I am for them yesterday. And um, lovely dinner on the table when I got home. And then my daughter, again, had some poopy problems. So I had to assist her instead of eating dinner. And I was angry and I was being stubborn and I was frustrated and I'm just feeling like this overwhelming, you know, all of this stuff going on. And it was just, it was just a tough day. So I just want you to know, like it's, I guess it's human. You know, I apologized to my husband this morning and um, you know, we're, we're all human. You know, everybody has their frustration. So just hang in there, have fun. I went to one of the Avoff stores this morning um, I told you guys yesterday we're in charge of their decorating department at the moment and um, I needed to go to Glen Cove to pro process some orders and take care of some stuff there. So I went over there and um, 
you know, they're only doing curbside pickup right now. Nobody's allowed in the store. And, uh, but it was nice to just get out of the house and I actually had to find some fabrics for a client who is looking to reupholster a wing chair and she wanted um, something in a floral, in persimmon. So I had fun looking through some fabric books and putting some stuff aside for her that she could go to the store and pick up, which is kind of nice. While we're in this craziness, it's not a bad thing to look at pretty things, right? And, and figure out what we want to do and how we want to make our spaces nice. So, and of course, I did that very safely. I had my gloves on. I didn't have any contact with anybody. I wiped everything down when I left and I made sure I was wearing gloves when I pulled all her fabric books. Um, and then I taped everything together and got my hair stuck in it. So I had to remove the tape and then put it back on. <laughs> you know, the problems of a curly girl. How many other curly girls do I have out there? I know, it's, it's a problem. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna come on around to the other side and finish this up over there. And you, I don't know if you can see this, I'm gonna take the camera off in just a second, but um, you know, I always say like your first coat kind of looks bad sometimes and that's okay. Um, don't get crazy about it. Uh, the first coat is kind of like primer and you know, don't try to make it perfect basically. Here's a quick tip and this is something that I should have done. Um, when you're painting, a table like this, you should paint it upside down first because it allows you to get into all the grooves and crevices very, very easily. So I will definitely do that off camera uh, when I do my subsequent coats, but let me just get enough of this painted so I can show you guys the next technique here, the glazing, so that you have like a good, a good view of that. All right. We're getting there, we're getting there. And then after I get this code on here, I'm gonna answer some questions and then jump on my computer and see what questions I got. I know I have a question about transfers. We gotta answer a question about transfers. How many of you have used transfers? Has anybody used transfers out there? The decor transfers? <gasps> Kimberly, hello, darling. How are you? Where are you right now? Where are you? Are you here or are you somewhere else? Are you with your mama? I'm sure she's gonna answer us. <laughs> we miss you terribly. And I did get your message the other day and I'm so sorry that I didn't get back to you because you know what happens is I get like 50 other messages and then I don't see the other messages that are buried. And just now when I saw your name, it reminded me. Okay, all right. So this is looking like a primer basically and what i'm going to have to do is once this dries i'll give it another quick coat and then i could do the glaze on top of that so this paint how long do you have to wait for it to dry it dries so quick which is a wonderful thing um probably 30 to 60 minutes and then you can go ahead and put your second coat on or you know whatever else you're doing basically okay so i'm feeling pretty good about this All right, so I'll let this dry a little bit. I'll come back to it in just a few minutes. Let me answer some questions. <clears throat> You're making my day better too, Kim. All right, so let's see here. Let's see what we got. Open up my computer here. Right now, Google wants to verify me. Really? Okay. All right. Exciting stuff. I'm gonna move you guys a little bit closer because I feel like I'm so far away. All right. Oh, no, it doesn't want me to go that way. Okay. It's yelling at me. Oh, Kimberly, you are sick. Oh, that's not good. Did you have coronavirus? <laughs> I swear I had it. I swear I did. 
Maybe we'll find out. Okay, all right, so here we are. <sighs> I told you guys yesterday, I don't like this whole looking at myself while I'm on video. It's just, uh, it's no fun. Can't, can't want it. All right, so let's see here. Julie sent me some questions. Wow, this is a lot of questions. Okay. So what'd you guys have for lunch? I ate, I scarfed down a piece of lasagna about 30 seconds before we jumped on camera. Ooh, ooh, this is a fun piece. I'm looking at a surround, a fireplace surround. Okay, I'm excited about this one. We'll see that in just a minute. All right, so question number one. Okay, so we have a question from Marty, and Marty says that she buys all her supplies from us. Thank you, Marty. We appreciate that. And she ordered a few cans of Jolie and a stencil, and it came super fast, which we do ship pretty much the same day anytime we ship product. And uh, it always ships via UPS, so depending on where you are in the country, if you're in on Long Island or in New York, it's usually like the next day that you'll get your product, which is fantastic. Um, so she says she's only used Annie Sloan in the past. And her question is, what are the differences, if, if any, between the Jolie and the Annie Sloan? So let me start with that question. So what are the differences? So, um, oh, let me, let me start with the second half of this question, which is why did we stop carrying Annie Sloan and why do we now carry Jolie paint? So we started carrying Annie Sloan eight years ago it's it's a fantastic product and it kind of lit the DIY world on fire right I mean all of you guys know that so basically about a year and a half ago Annie Sloan made a decision to move her manufacturing from um, the United States to Europe for the US market now she had previously you know she had always manufactured her European paint in Europe um, but the U.S. version of the product, which is what we always carried, was always manufactured here in the United States. So um, when she moved the product, we, of course, tested it. We wanted to see if this new product from Europe, um, you know, if we were going to continue carrying that product. And, you know, I just found that it was it was very different from what we were used to with the U.S. version. So we had a really hard decision. And let me tell you something. I spent months <laughs> laboring over this decision. If we should, um, you know, if we should continue carrying any Sloan or not, you know, because it really was a new product. Um, the other thing is that the colors were different. So the U.S. version of the colors from Annie Sloan were different from the European colors. And so I made this decision with my customers at the forefront of my mind. Um, I, I had to make a tough decision to say that, you know, I wanted to make sure that we carried a product that our customers felt comfortable using, that had a consistent, um, you know, feel to it, a consistent way of using the product. I felt that all the techniques were a little bit different that I, I was going to be doing with the product. So uh, we decided to, to go with the Jolie. So Jolie is actually made by the same manufacturer that produced the U.S. version of Annie Sloan. Um, and it will feel very, very familiar to you if you have used the, the Annie Sloan product that we carried um, in the past. If you use the Jolie, it will feel very, very familiar. And Marty, Marty is thinking so too. We actually just got another uh, another client sent us. I love when you guys send us testimonials. We we really really appreciate it. Um, somebody said that they had always used Annie Sloan and they used the Jolie and they really really loved it. So again, my any decision that I make with sweet pieces is always made with my customers in mind. So um, please know that any decision we make, I'm thinking about you guys. You know what you you know, what is going to be best for you. So the product, so what are the differences? Um, you know, some people say, well, is it chalk paint? So the term chalk paint is technically a trademark name. So, you know, think of like clean. 
Kleenex, um, or every tissue isn't Kleenex, um, but a lot of people just refer to tissues as hand me a Kleenex or post-it, a post-it note. So it's a chalk paint is a trademark term, which is trademarked by Annie Sloan. Um, so technically it's not chalk paint because that is a trademark term, but Jolie is a very similar product in the sense that it is, um, it requires no prep work. It has a beautiful matte finish to it. And it is also sealed with a wax, which gives it a layer of sheen and protection and has a beautiful satiny type of a look to it. So those are really the, the differences, you know, that it's, it's called something different. And, um, you know, now with the new Jolie line, the colors that we have are a little bit different, but we have excellent, excellent matches to the former line. So, um, if you painted with something that you purchased, you, if you painted with any Sloan paint that you purchased from us prior to us carrying Jolie and you want to have a comparable match to it in the Jolie line, just give us a call and we can we can walk you through it and tell you what, what to order that will be comparable for you. Um, but then we also have a lot of new colors with the Jolie line. So we have um, Gesso White, Palace White. Those are two new whites. We also have Dove Gray which is a new color. Um, so those are, I love, love all of them. I mean, I love all of them. Misty Cove is a brand new color. Uh, Swedish Gray is brand new. So lots of really fun. Oh, Eucalyptus, look at that beauty. It's gorgeous. It's like a gray green. It's really, really pretty. So lots of fun new things on our website, always. Uh, all right, so Marty. I hope that uh, I hope I answered your question. And she's spending her shelter time at home painting old furniture. So I love that she's gotten um, a couple things done. Wow, you use some stencils. How fun! I love this. Very cool. Um, okay, so next question is from Daria, and Daria has this amazing fireplace. This is amazing. I'm gonna have to. Let me see if I can show this to you guys. Um, it is a soapstone fireplace, and she wants to know if she can paint it. So let me see if I can turn this around and show it to you guys. How gorge is that? This is going to be stunning, stunning once it's painted. Okay, so how do you paint this? Just like you paint everything else, you can absolutely paint it. You can paint pretty much everything with the Jolie matte finish paint. Fabric, plastic, metal, brick, concrete, glass, stone, wood, marble, soapstone. Um, you can pretty much paint everything. So how would you do it? Um, I would, I would use a layering technique to do like, um, you know, several different colors, you know, depending on which way you want to go with your color scheme. Like if you were going lighter and you wanted to do whites, I would probably use like a little bit of the grays, like maybe Swedish gray or French gray. And then I would work in some gesso on top of that, uh, maybe pure white on top of that. So you can, you can kind of layer in the colors and I would do the dry brushing. You can also do a little bit of color wash. So that's basically where you're spraying the paint down and then layering different colors on top of each other. So if you're wondering like exactly how to do some of these techniques, you can jump onto our YouTube channel and just search for them. So you can uh, search for color wash or dry brush. We have several videos on how to do all of that fun stuff. But Daria, you have to promise me that you are going to send us a picture when you're done because that is going to be gorgeous. It's going to be absolutely stunning. Um, okay, so next question from Kurt. Can Jolie matte finish paint be used on metal? The answer is, of course, yes. So you can pretty much, like I just said, use this product on anything. Fabric, plastic, metal, brick, concrete, glass, laminate, formica, wood, marble, soapstone, you name it. So that's really the beautiful thing about this, this product. And I see some drips here, so I'm going to, I'm going to catch those, um, is that you really can use it on pretty much anything. So I love using it on stuff that you're going to put outside because you don't have to seal it. Okay. Anything that goes outside, you don't seal it. So you would just do your paint and then, um, just leave it. That's it. Just paint and leave it. So yeah, you can, you can definitely do metal and you can do all the same techniques with metal 
that you would do on, say, a, a piece of wood furniture. So you can do the color washes, the dry brushing. Uh, we also have some other, like, metallic-y type products. I'll show you a couple of those today. And then we also have pearl plaster. I should have grabbed a... Um, yes, I promise I will do that, Julie. I grabbed I didn't grab pearl plaster that's one of my favorite products from artisan enhancements but you can view it on our website just look for pearl plaster and I also have a video on YouTube on how to do a pearl plaster wash one of my most favorite techniques and now I'm thinking about it and I'm thinking I might show that to you on the piece down in my basement that I'm going to paint pink because why not why should you not have a pink piece of furniture in your basement I don't want to say it too loud though because my husband might be listening <laughs> Okay, so next question is from Marsha, and Marsha is asking, um, she said she used any Sloan chalk paint in the past, and she struggled with the waxing. So we've heard that for eight years, that waxing is hard, and we've told you many, many times it shouldn't be hard. So if you're working hard to wax and you did to paint, you're doing something wrong. Um, but I have news for you. I have some exciting news for you. So if you didn't like waxing with any Sloan paint or any Sloan um, wax, rather, um, the Jolie wax is different. That product is totally different. And I have some right here, wax. And it, it's it's amazing. I wish, they have to invent this. How can you get smell through, through a phone? Because number one, you need to be smelling this delicious candle, suck it up buttercup that I'm burning right now. But also, I wish you could smell this, but just smell right now. Do you smell that? That's what it smells like. There's no odor to it, which is really fantastic. Um, so it's a new wax, non-hazardous, no odor. It's, I mean, it's pretty much the same consistency as wax, as our former wax, um, but it it's, it's a different formulation. It goes on like the soft butter that you buy that comes in like the little carton container. It's amazing. It's so, so, so super easy to use. I would highly recommend using it. It will change your life when it comes to waxing. So Marsha, 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 you should definitely try the Jolie Wax because it's totally, totally different. The other thing that's very different are the, um, the colored waxes. So the brown wax and the black wax, so much easier to use. They glide on, they move around really nicely, which is, which is a really, really nice thing. So she, Marsha is looking to paint her cabinets and she's afraid because of waxing on the large surfaces. She watched our Jolie finishing wax demo on YouTube and we gave her a little bit of renewed inspiration, which we love. So any special tips about using Jolie paint on cabinets? What do I use, a brush or a roller? So I like to use a brush anytime I'm using the Jolie matte finish paint. I just feel like using a roller is kind of going against the grain. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, I'm sure you've all gotten a gel manicure. You wouldn't just sit there and let them just dry your fingers with a gel manicure. You have to go under the light. So it's the same thing. Like it, it just, it doesn't make sense. So I would just use a brush with the Jolie paint um, because it is very self-leveling. You won't see a lot of brush strokes could you use a roller? You could, but I, I just always prefer to use a brush with uh, the matte finish paint. Now, you do have another option. If you don't want to use the Jolie matte finish paint and you want more of like a smooth modern finish, then, and not to say that you can't get that with Jolie, you absolutely can, but if you want to use a little bit of a different product, then you could use the general finishes paint. So this is the general finishes uh, furniture paint that we carry. It, it is called milk paint. It's not really a true milk paint. It's just called that. Ignore the name. It's furniture paint. It's very hard. It's very modern. It has a shiny, a little bit of a sheen to it, like a satiny sheen. It's not like high gloss, but you can put a gloss finish on it and make it shiny. So the other thing, and this is something I'm going to be showing you guys next week, um, is two products. So number one, stain blocker. And then number two is the brushable white enamel. So this is actually, I'm going to use this on my cabinets downstairs in my laundry room. I'm going to show you guys that. So this, these two products are really great when you're doing cabinetry. Would I paint my cabinets with Jolie matte finish paint? Absolutely, I would. Um, I'm just choosing to use this because it's more of a, 
a modern finish. Uh, it's, it's, you know, I just want a solid white down there. You'll see when you come down there. It's just more of like a, a clean space. And um, I, I love the Jolie finish paint for more like old world type of finishes and when I'm layering the product. So that's, that's the kind of stuff that I love. But, you know, other special tips, I would always highly recommend using the crud cutter whenever you're cleaning your kitchen cabinets. Um, this is not, so crud cutter is a brand, but this, the product that we use is called pre-paint cleaner. So this, it's really important that when you're doing your kitchen cabinets and you're using Jolie paint, you need to use the crud cutter because it will take off everything. All the grease, grime, oils, pledge buildup, you know, splatter, it, it will take everything off. So that, that's a tip. All right, Donna. Donna has the next question. Uh, she's asking, can you combine a coat of chalk paint or matte finish paint, chalk type paint, with bits of latex gold paint to show through once distressed? Can you combine? Okay, so I'm not exactly sure which way to go with this. So can you, can you actually pour the two paints together? No, I would not do that. So I would definitely keep them separate. If you wanted to layer one on top of the other, I would say that's okay to do, but if you're gonna put the latex paint first, then you need to make sure that you're doing all of the proper prep work for the latex paint. So if I were doing this um, table that I'm working on for the client and I was base coating it in a gold latex paint, I wouldn't have needed to sand it, strip it, prime it, before I put the gold on. So what I would do is I would put a coat of the chalk type paint, I would let that dry, then I would put the gold on, then you could layer the um, the, the chalk type paint or Jolie paint on top of it. Now, if you're doing that so that you could distress and see the gold popping through, you wanna keep in mind that Latex paint doesn't sand quite as nicely as the chalk type paint does. So sometimes if you try to sand that latex paint, it might kind of like ball up and, you know, just roll off. So, you know, what I would do to kind of get some of that gold to peek through is I would use gilding wax. So I didn't, I don't have any of that with me today, but I'll definitely show it to you guys in, in one of my next videos. It's on our website. And I also have some YouTube videos on how to use gilding wax. It comes in this little tub. It's, I might have some down. No, I don't think I do. Um, it comes in a little tub and you literally dip your finger in and you can just brush it on any little area to get that gold to kind of pop through. So it's super easy to use. It goes really beautifully over the chalk type paint, Jolie paint, Annie Sloan paint. And um, it looks gorgeous and it's, it's easy, easy peasy. So I would recommend maybe doing something like that. Okay, next question is from Kathy, and she is she is thanking us. You are so welcome, Kathy. This is like, no, thank you for watching. We so, so appreciate it. And uh, yeah, it's pausing our mind, right? I don't want to think about what's going on. I didn't listen again today. I didn't watch, I did not watch the, um, the latest news conference because, you know, I'll just check the bullet points later. <laughs> so here's our question. She wanted to, oh, she's asking me, this is a personal question. How is it going as a new mom and how do I plan to carve out time for myself and projects? I'm a mom of a 21 month old and feel like I'm still trying to figure it out. So I get it. Uh, my baby is 26 months, 27, 28. I, and I'm still figuring it out too. So I can give you some tips. These are some things that um, I tell everybody that's having a new baby. I read this book, a, one of my lovely dealers in the store gave it to me. It's called The Contented Little Baby. And it was written by, I think a midwife, a European midwife. And she talks about the importance of having a schedule for your, for your baby. So when, when I'm like, I love having a schedule. I, you know, when things go off schedule, I get a little bit crazy. I'm a little bit of a control freak. So People, and, and I wanted to breastfeed, so people would were telling me, like, it was impossible to have a schedule and breastfeed and have a baby. They laughed at me. So um, anytime people tell me I can't do something, I do it. <laughs> it's also a problem that I have. So um, 
I followed this book to a T and it, it taught me how to kind of put her on a schedule. Now, did it always work perfectly? No, but it, it moved her into a direction of having a schedule. And now today, you know, she's, you know, 28 months, something like that. And she goes to bed between seven and eight o'clock every single night. She sleeps for a full 12, 13 hours a night. She still takes a nap. We, you know, we have that schedule. And even when she was younger, we put her in bed by seven o'clock and she went pretty much every night. Did we have to cry it out? I think we cried it out a couple, a couple times, but you know, she, she got into that groove. We put her in a schedule and, and, you know, she followed suit. So my husband and I had that time, that personal time in the evening to be adults and to talk and to have dinner and, you know, watch a show or, you know, meditate or, you know, listen, read a book or, you know, whatever. So though that's definitely the time that I have for myself is, is when she, she goes to bed and in the morning, actually, I wake up early. She doesn't wake up until seven or eight o'clock, usually be seven, between seven thirty and eight thirty, she'll wake up. And so in the mornings, I always try to do something for myself, like get up and do yoga or another beach body workout. Love my beach body. Um, what else do I do? Sometimes I get up and I listen to a book. Sometimes I just, I get up and I take a long shower and I stand in my closet and try on four or five different necklaces until I find the perfect one. <laughs> that is what I do for myself. And, um, you know, to be honest, I carve out time to go get my nails done like every two weeks, which I can't right now because none of the salons are open. <laughs> um, so I do that for myself because I think it's it's really, really important. And I, don't get me wrong, there are times when I feel really selfish when I'm choosing to, you know, go get my nails done instead of working more or coming home to see my daughter. But it it fills me up. You know, it gives me, like, the energy that I need to come home and be a mom or, or you know, be a wife. I, I won't lie, my husband does also let me go and get a massage every now and then on the weekends at Hand in Stone. I love Hand in Stone, another one of my guilty pleasures. So, you know, I do try to do that for myself because if you, it, I mean, I know this firsthand, if you don't take care of yourself, you can't take care of anybody else. And I'm the kind of person I, I really enjoy being alone. Like I don't, I don't need to, like, even in high school and college, like, I never really enjoyed going to parties. I prefer to just have been home reading, you know, House Beautiful or something. So I, I, I need that, like, quiet alone time by myself. So if that's the kind of person that you are, you have to do that for yourself. If you don't, you're just going to drive yourself crazy. So, Okay. Thanks, Kathy. Thanks for the question. So we have uh, Jean Marie. She finished a dark brown headboard into a white distressed look. Gorgeous. And she says there's a few red spots that have bled through. So she wants to know how to get rid of the bleed through marks. So that is pretty typical. I'm going to go ahead and just throw another quick code on this while I'm talking with you guys. So that's pretty typical for, let's say, mahogany pieces, older mahogany pieces, Sometimes we'll do that. It will it will give you that um, red or pink you might see bleed through. So what that is, is it's basically, it's called aniline dye. So aniline dye was used back in like the 40s on some of the mahogany furniture. And there's really no covering it up. So if you see it start coming through on your piece, you need to stop and do what I'm going to tell you to do because you could put 79 coats of paint on there and it's still going to bleed through. So what you need to do is you need to seal it. You can seal it with one of two things. You can either use stain blocking primer, okay? This is hands down, I guarantee it, try to prove me wrong, <laughs> the best stain blocker on the market. It's been tested against every other stain blocker out there. General Finishes uh, has, you guys have heard me sing their praises. General Finishes has a proprietary formula for this stain blocker. They've gotten the inside scoop on the latest and newest 
um, resin systems and chemistry that goes along with making products, all the things I don't really know about, but you know, I know that it's important. And their stain blocker, like I said, is just hands down the most amazing. So if you don't have stain blocker, the other thing that you can use is Zinser Clear Shellac. Okay? So those are the two things that you want to use. So you, you paint on your coat a paint, and then you get um, the bleed through coming through. Stop what you're doing, you know, let the paint dry, and then go ahead and throw a coat of the shellac on. And that will stop any more bleed through from happening. So um, Jean Marie, what you're gonna do is you are going to, did you, if you waxed it, then you need to remove the wax. So just take a little bit of mineral spirits in that area where you're going, where that you have that pink bleed through and wipe it down so you can remove that wax. And then you will go ahead, put a little bit of clear shellac or the stain blocking primer on it, let that dry. Then you can put your white paint back on after it dries. And then you can you know, do whatever else you have to do, either wax it or if you're distressing it or whatever. So here's another tip. If you, if you want to distress your piece and you want the dark brown to come through, don't use stain blocking primer, use shellac because the stain blocking primer is white. So when you distress, you're gonna have to go through not only your chalk type paint, but you're also gonna have to go through the primer. So it's better to just have the clear shellac on there if you're utilizing that dark brown that's, that's underneath there. Make sense? Yes. All right, so I'm gonna go back and check. Let's see. I'm just gonna run around the table really quick and just do this other leg. All right, this is looking pretty good. I think she is going to love this piece. She wasn't sure if she just wanted to get rid of it, um, but she loved the height of this table. It's a really good height and it has a nice, it's like a 30 inch table, which is just a really good size. And it's got such a pretty detailed base. So I said, no, no, no. We are going to paint this bad boy and make it look beautiful. And it can be modern. We can make it look, you know, kind of modern-ish modern in its style, but not modern in its painting technique. Okay, I got everything, a second coat on here. So after this dries up, I can show you guys a little bit of the glazing technique that I'm gonna do. Okay. And just an FYI, the top of this table, she had painted it with a, um, with black, uh, Noir actually is the name of the color, which is another new Jolie color because we never had a true black in the Annie Sloan line. This is a true black. So she had painted the top of this with the Noir and then she also did wax on it. And I'll tell you, she did a really good waxing job. So there was a lot of wax on there. So I needed to make, I need to make sure I get all that off before I paint it. Now, the way I treat a client's piece is very different from how I treat my own pieces. <laughs> so if this were my own piece, I probably wouldn't be so diligent about removing that excess wax, but because this is for a client, I'm gonna get a little bit crazy about it. So what, what am I gonna do? I've already started. So I sprayed it down with denatured alcohol. I let it sit on top. I wiped it back. I sanded it. I did another layer of the de denatured alcohol. I'll then put some crud cutter on it. I'll sand it a little bit more. So I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to just take a little bit of caution in, in making sure that it's, it's done the right way. Okay. So we have Mary next. Mary has a question. She has two issues. Um, she wants to update her living room. She recently purchased a leather, a beige leather couch and love seat. And the wood outline that outlines the two pieces is a light wood and it's, it has a carved design on it. So she wants the carving to be more pronounced. So she's thinking of doing a wash or a gilding effect. And she is stumped. She doesn't know what to do. So what would I do? I would probably, I mean, I would probably do... 
it depends. I had to see the space. So I would either do like a white, like a bright white, and you could do that with like a wash. And then you could just like very lightly dry brush. So I do a white wash and then you could just very lightly dry brush, let's say a white or a gray on top of the carvings that are, that are raised. I think that would look really pretty. Or if you wanted it to be darker, then you could do the opposite. You could take a darker color, wash it, and then do an even darker. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so let's see what her next question is. She has a 90s wall unit. How many of you have a 90s wall unit? I've seen a lot of those in our eight years in business. And she, it's in the same living room. It's finished in surprise a cherry would finish <laughs> and the centerpiece is a tv cabinet she's thinking about transforming it into a bar and okay a bar with two china cabinets for display one on each side of the tv she wants to bring these pieces into the 21st century so there's you know so many different things that you could do with that it depends on your style now i'm totally into like all these bold bright colors um, as you can see, my my dining chairs are turquoise. By the way, these were done before I ever even owned sweet pieces. They're in desperate need of a makeover. I will be getting to them soon, maybe during quarantine, depending on how long they make us stay home. <laughs> so I could see it being really fun to do it in a bright, bold color. So like I would do something crazy like emerald green with some sort of beautiful gold background paper in, in the background. Or if you're not quite that bold, then I would go with like a white and or a gray. I mean, white furniture is timeless. It instantly brightens a space. It makes it beautiful. And it's probably never going to go out of style. So I think doing it in um, a white, you could do like a gray wash over it. I always love, love, love doing some sort of paper or something in the background, something fun and funky. And that can be easily switched out if you, you know, get sick of looking at it. So we love using temp paper to do that. It's a temporary wallpaper that you can very easily switch out. It peels off very easily. Or if you want to do something really fun, you could do like a real grass cloth or some sort of a, a vinyl wall covering, which if you're looking for something like that, I would recommend that you go to Aboffs. Um, I mentioned to you guys yesterday that we are running their design department and they have um, some fantastic locations on Long Island. Uh, you can check their websites, check out their design centers, which are currently not open. The physical locations are not open. However, we are doing virtual consults. So if you want to give us a call and tell us about your space, we can set aside some wallpaper books for you. You can stop at your local store, pick them up. It's no contact pickup. So you would call the store, tell them that you're there, you want to pick it up, we'll set it aside for you. And then they'll just drop it in your trunk. You can check it out in your space and then call us and let us know what you need to order. Um, okay, so Mary, I need to see that when you're done. I want to see what, what you actually um, paint for us. So Tracy has a question. She is wondering if I can talk about the care of our wax rug. I was wondering if you're going to tell us about the care of our wax rug. Do you wash it? Let it dry for a certain amount of time. A wax rug. I don't, I, I'm stumped. I'm stumped, Tracy. I'm not sure what that is. So did you, maybe she waxed her rug. I mean, we have painted rugs. You could do that too. If you have waxed your rug, what would be the, hmm, a wax rug. I'm not really sure what that is. Tracy, you're going to have to send me clarification. I'd be happy to clarify that for you. But I would say if you have waxed a rug, how do you care for it? Um, I would say, you know, could be vinyl. I don't know if that's what you're talking, referring to. So we do have a brand new product in the store. They're called Vinyl Rugs. They're amazing. So let me give you a little sneak peek. I have one in my house. I'm not going to show you too much of my house, though, because it's not clean right now. <laughs> so here is the Vinyl Rug. How amazing is this? So this is, oh, rag. She said rag. Okay. So this is vinyl rug. We got off on a tangent, but that's okay. So this rug is vinyl. Okay. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show this to you. It's vinyl. 
how cool is this? It's like linoleum. So Madison plays here. She does her Play-Doh and then we clean it up and we wipe it down. It's like the best thing. And they come in in like a gazillion different finishes. I can't believe that I didn't realize you were saying wax rag. Seriously, of all the times I've used wax rags. So how would you care for your wax rags? Well, that's an easy one. So you can wash them. What I recommend is washing them in the sink with hot soapy water. Um, you know, just rub it against each other like you were, you know, back in the olden days, washing it on the washboard. So do that and then just let it air dry. And then you can use them over and over. At some point in time, they're going to get just filled up with wax and you'll know, you'll feel it. It won't, you, it just won't come clean at that point. It's time to retire it and get a new wax rag. <laughs> Um, okay, so Kathy has a question. She painted a small table with Annie Sloan Old White, and she wants to show some dimension by using dark wax over the clear wax. If it's too dark, can she repaint right over the wax? So you can. You can paint right over the wax, but the better thing to do would be make sure you have clear wax on there first, okay? Then do your dark wax. If it's too dark, then you can use clear wax as an eraser to basically remove any of the excess dark wax. So that would be my um, that would be my suggestion. She's also wishing that there was a medium colored wax that was in between the clear and the dark. So this is something, Kathy, you need to try the Jolie brown wax for sure. It is so much easier to control. It is a little bit lighter in color than the Annie Sloan dark wax. And you can also mix it with a clear wax to create a lighter brown wax. We also have white wax. So you can also mix it with white wax to create a lighter brown wax. So you have options. Okay, next question, Roxana. She's asking if when using gilding wax, should you sand first or not? Uh, so she painted a vanity. She sanded in wax, but did when she added the gold accents, it was okay, but she didn't like it. The dark edges from the sanding was too harsh of a look under the gold. So, yeah, I mean, sometimes you got to just play around with these things and just test out what works. So if you at this point have repainted it, I would add the, the gilding wax on top of the paint. You know, don't sand it back if you felt like that was too harsh. Here's the other thing. Gilding wax should always, always, always be the last thing. So wax reactivates itself. So I just mentioned if you put clear wax over dark wax, you can erase the dark wax by putting more clear wax. So it's the same thing with the gilding wax. If you put too much gilding wax on, you can use clear wax to basically erase it. So you want to make sure that you're using that clear wax first, that's important, and then you can control it. So it really should be the very last thing that you put on. You shouldn't really sand after you put it on because you're almost gonna be sanding it away, so. Okay, Celeste, Celeste has a question. She is planning to refinish her daughter's bureau and nightstand. She bought her products from Sweet Pieces over the weekend when we were still open. Um, so again, we're not physically open right now, but we are we are still doing curbside pickup and website orders and free shipping on the website right now. But you do have to make sure you put in code free ship. So she's going for a soft driftwood type of a finish, like one of the pieces we have on display in the store by, by the coffee machine. So free coffee always at Sweet Pieces. Once we're open, we'll have free coffee too. And currently her daughter's bureau is espresso. So she's wondering if a coat of old fashioned white will cover it before she applies the glazes she bought. Um, okay, so since Celeste is going for a driftwood type of a finish, I don't think it would be such a bad thing to have a little bit of that dark espresso color coming through. So if you do, when you do your first coat, of the white. So when I was painting on the table here, I was kind of going in every which direction, but when you're doing this like driftwood finish that has a very linear type of a look, I would keep my brush strokes very linear and I would make sure that it looked somewhat consistent consistently inconsistent so I wouldn't go super heavy in one spot like I would try to just keep the whole one coat 
pretty consistent. So if you do that and you have a little bit of a peeking through, you can absolutely go over it with your, your layered glazes and see, see how it looks. What I would also recommend is just take a draw out and use that one draw, do a coat of the white, let it dry, then do a couple of your glazes. If you like the way it looks, then go ahead and do it on the rest of the piece. If you don't, just paint over it, do a second coat of the white, and then you can, you know, you'll know that you'll have to do a second coat of the white on the entire piece, which is good. Okay, and then we have Angela. She wants to know the best way to paint or spray paint metallic on glass. So good question. I've had um, experience with painting on glass and I'm just trying to think how to tell you guys this. So we have a product in the store. It's called Mirror Effects. It's available on the website. You can take a peek so you know what I'm talking about but it comes in, in a little spray paint can and it creates like a mercury glass effect on, um, on mirror. Do you wanna see? Do you want me to show you? I act like this. So this is in my bathroom, my guest bathroom. Um, here's my guest bathroom. And here are the doors. So you can kind of see. So these these doors were originally like to a china cabinet. So they were just clear glass. I don't this I don't know if this is really giving you a good view of this. Um so you can kind of see, I'll go a little bit closer maybe. Yeah, so this kind of shows you the glass effect. So that little speckly type of a look that is from layering alcohol and spray paints. So if you look on the back side of this, you can kind of see like where I spray painted, like you can see like the, the door there. So I layered satin spray paint and this mirror effects and they created these, these beautiful and then I had them built in. So I didn't want to throw anything away. Fun, fun, right? Um, so that's how I would recommend, can't show you my house, it's dirty, <laughs> it's messy. Um, so that's how I would recommend doing spray paint metallic I, I, on glass. I know they have other metallic spray paints, I'm just not sure, I, I don't have any experience with them, so I'm not sure. So now, let me see here, we have some other questions. Uh, let's see. Vintage vinyl. We love those. So just a, a heads up about the, the vinyl rugs. You, they come in like a bazillion different patterns, tons of different sizes. So you can go ahead and, you know, you can order them in any sizes, which is fantastic. So if there is anything, any particular size that you're interested in taking a look at, we can send you some links to the, all of the patterns. Sorry about that. Okay, so, oh yes, Patty mentioned uh, that you can thin out the mineral, uh, the gilding wax with mineral spirits and you can dry brush it in between coats. So that's definitely something that you can do there. So Tracy mentioned she used the wax and she felt like it left oil streaks on her furniture. So if, if you have streakiness on the furniture, then sometimes that can mean that either you don't have enough wax or you have too much wax on the surface. So, you know, using a rag to just buff, like you can use these shop towels to just buff out the excess wax, um, that definitely helps. Or you might need to add a little bit more because sometimes if you, if you, let's say you put wax in one area, but you don't in another, it will look streaky. It will look like it has two different finishes. And, you know, sometimes if some of our customers, they're just not fans of the oil or of the wax finish, and that's okay. But we do want to make sure that you're doing it correctly so that you can really understand what a wax finish should look like and feel like. Um, so make sure you check with us first. We can walk you through it in the store, exactly how it's supposed to look and feel. And then if you decide it really isn't for you, then you can use a top coat on top of the Jolie paint as well, which we're actually coming out with a new top coat. We don't have it in stock yet, but we are gonna have it very soon. But you can also use the General Finishes high performance top coat as well 
to do that. <sighs> Let's see what else. Pearl Plaster. Yes, Angela, I'm telling you, check it out. Go on my YouTube channel and, and check out the video. It's amazing. Let's see. Who else? Any other questions? <laughs> Yes, my urns. I just, I stole them. I stole them from the store. <laughs> um, I just thought they were going to be perfect there. Those white, those white urns on top of my china cabinets. Uh, by the way, those china cabinets are um, vintage and done at Sweet Pieces. How did I keep my hair out of the paint? <laughs> my hair always gets in the paint. It's okay. You can see, you know, it's a little fuzzy today. My hair always gets in the paint. I don't, I don't get too crazy about that kind of stuff. All right, let's see. Transfer. So, um, Cindy, is that is that your name? Is it Cindy? It's, I know it's not really Hop. It, um, anyway, Hop, I would be happy to answer this question. So, if you do a transfer on a piece of furniture, do you need to seal it afterwards? So, what we like to recommend, and this is also on our YouTube channel. We do have a video on YouTube. Um, I think it's called... It's something about furniture, furniture decor transfer, how to furniture decor transfers. So we recommend putting wax first, then doing your transfer, and then you can add another coat of wax on top, but you don't necessarily have to. So that's really kind of up to you. Okay, let's see what else. Hello, hello, Ellen. Hello, Angela. I think Ellen just asked a question about crackle tax. So, uh, thanks, Patty. <laughs> how do you add color on top of crackle tax? So, here's how crackle tax works. And again, go to YouTube, search for crackle tax. Mm -hmm. I have a video on there on all about how to do it. So, you're going to layer, put a color on first or no color. Okay, let it dry. Then you're going to put crackle tax on next, let that dry. The more liberal you apply crackle tex, the bigger the cracks are, the, the thinner you apply it, the smaller the cracks are going to be. Once crackle tex dries, then you are going to layer another coat of paint on top of it. And when you layer that paint on top of it, you want to make sure that you have a thick enough layer of paint that the crackle can crack what's sitting on top of it. So in other words, if, if your layer on top is too thin, it won't be able to crack it. So you want to layer it on kind of thick. Oh, and we just linked the um, crackle text video um, in one of the comments. So basically, you need to layer that on thickly. And then you also want to make sure that you don't move it around a lot. So you're going to lay it on and leave it. After about 60 seconds or so, you're going to start to see like some crackling. And when you see that crackling, what I like to do is, and I show this on my video, I take a rag, I crumple it up like this, and then I start to do like this twisting motion, which is going to pull up that top layer of paint and create this textured crackle type of finish. So I'm not really a crackle girl, like when it comes to the typical crackling, but I love crackle text because it creates this very authentic old world type of crackle, which is really, really nice. So check it out. Definitely try Crackle Tax, one of my another one of my favorite artisan enhancements products. So I don't know, is that it? Is that all the questions that we have? I don't see any other questions. Julie, you'll have to text me if you if you see any other questions on there. So I'm going to jump back to um painting over here. And I, you know, I just thought we we did say we're gonna do a giveaway and do a giveaway to somebody who submitted a question. And I'm not exactly sure how we're going to choose. I'm not sure how we're going to choose. Should we pick a number? Should we pick a number? Let's see. Did Dion ask a question? Let's see, where's Dion? Let's see. I'm scrolling. I hate scrolling through here when I'm on camera with you guys. <clears throat> okay. I don't see any other questions. All right. So let's take a look at this. I'm going to flip the camera around so you can see. Oh, 
I don't see that question. Can you send it to me, Julie? Okay, so let's see here. I am going to pop open a couple of our half painted furniture piece. Okay, so you can see the areas where we didn't paint yet and the areas that we did. We have lots of texture. You know, I didn't paint all straight, which is good for what I wanna do. I wanna create this glazy type of a finish. So how am I gonna do that? I'm gonna use a couple of products. I am going to use Scumble. So Scumble is another, I have so many favorite products from Artisan Enhancements. So Scumble is a product from Artisan Enhancements that's, that allows you to turn paint into a glaze. And it's, I, I've never used it with the general finishes and I've never, I've never used it with like a, a real latex paint. Um, I've only used it with the matte finish or the chalk paint. So that's really the best thing that it's for. So here's, I'm using this metallic-y um, product here by general finishes. And I'm just stirring. And we have another question. Someone wants to know, Dion, I think, wants to know, how does Jolie hold up on outdoor furniture? So it kind of depends. Now, furniture that's actually being used, if it's a smooth metal, I would recommend, you know, using probably just your typical, I guess, spray paint or outdoor furniture. If it's really smooth metal, if it's not really used very often and it's just kind of there for show, um, the Jolie paint will hold up really, really nicely. So if it's something that has detail to it, so like I'll give you a little peek of my outdoor set. I don't know if you can see it, but see how that has like a lot of detail on it. I have been thinking for a very long time to paint that set because I think it would it would do beautifully. And I kind of want to paint it black because I'm, I'm done with the browns. We're done with the browns, right? So I want to paint it in the black and something like that, that has all that texture. I think it would hold up really beautifully. Something that's super smooth might be a little bit harder to maintain, but it, you could still use it. It would still definitely work. Okay. So what do I have here? What I have here is scumble. Okay. So Scumble, again, turns Jolie paint into glaze. Oop, almost spilled that whole can. Did you guys see that? Good thing I doubled up this drop cloth. So we're going to take some of the Scumble, okay? I'm going to take one of my favorite chip brushes, and I am going to paint a layer of this onto my surface, okay? So this is a slip coat. Okay, you want to put a slip coat on your furniture of scumble whenever you're doing a glaze on top of matte finish paint. Okay, so what this will do is it will just allow you to very easily control the glaze that goes on top of this. So I'm just putting a quick slip coat and I'll just do it on this leg and this little section of the top here to just show you guys how, how to work this. So once I have a um, slip coat on there, I'm gonna take my brush and since I have a, <laughs> a little pile here, I'm gonna use this and I'm just going to, I want this to be more in the crevices so I'm gonna kind of blot this into the crevices. I'll also blot it on the top, but I want to make sure that I get it in those crevices because we want to see that darker silvery gray in the crevices. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. Okay. Do it on the sides here. And then, oh, I, better, I might as well do it up here too. I'm also going to, and let me get it into all these grooves and crevices here. Okay. 
And then I'm going to take one of my shop towels. And again, I love these shop towels because they really hold up. So I can, I kind of beat them up a little bit and they will hold up very, very nicely. So I'm going to grab a shop towel. And I'm so sorry for this camera work here. I know it's probably, I don't want to make anybody sick. <laughs> Um, now I'm going to take my rag and I'm just, let me get this right so you can see it. I'm going to take this and I'm going to wipe it back. So can you see how it's staying in those grooves and crevices? But I'm able to control it on the outside. And I'm, I'm wiping it down on the side. And that's really what the scumble does is it allows you to really control it. So see, it's a little dark there. If I wipe it, then it just goes away. And this, it looks so much better in person than it does on camera here. But same thing I'm going to do up here. That There you go. You can kind of see it there. So I'm able to really wipe this off. And then it's just kind of hanging out in those grooves and crevices, which is what I want. So if you want to glaze with matte finish paint, the easiest way to do it is with scumble. In my honest opinion, it's my one of my favorite things to do is to do the scumble with the matte finish paint. It just makes it so pretty. And then you can even go back and you can kind of just, you know, feather this in to create the look that you want. And then the other thing with Scumble is that it does take a long time to dry. So you can really like fix a plethora of sins with it when you're using the Scumble. I'm just gonna wipe this back here, make sure it's nice and even. So when I go back to actually fix this, I don't have any issues. So I don't know if you can see there, there's like a little bit of a hole. So I'll just take my brush and just feather it out. And that scumble allows me to do that very, very easily. So this is gonna give it kind of like a textured type of a look, but interest. You know, sometimes customers call us and they say, um, you know, I just, I painted it one color and it was, it's boring. Like I need to do something else to it. So doing, the washes or the glazes is a really, really easy way to, to take your pieces to another level, basically. All right, so let's see. We, I think we have another question. Uh, the GF glaze color that I'm using right now. So what I'm using, and Julie's going to yell at me because we don't have this available on the website yet. It's called um, Pearl Effects in Argentine. So if you wanted to create this same look and on, on, with something that we have on the website right this very minute, then I would use, and I, sh I should have just used this for you. I would take these two colors right here. This is Oyster and Pewter, and I would mix these two colors together to create this same color that I have here, which is, you know, that would be the same exact thing. Uh, so you could do that. And then you would use the scumble. So you would need scumble, you would need oyster, and you would need pewter, Modern Masters metallic paint. And you could create that same, same type of a look. So Jeanette has a top coat, General Finishes top coats, to be streak free. Have I demonstrated this process? Good question. Uh, I don't know. I'm not sure if we've done a top coat um, video, but you can definitely check it out on our YouTube channel. Just search, go to YouTube, then search Sweet Pieces, and then search for Top Coat. But if I haven't, that will be on our agenda for the next few weeks. So how do I get a really streak-free finish with Top Coat? It's a very simple answer. Use a sprayer. <laughs> So we love sprayers at Sweet Pieces. Um, Pat, my girl Patty loves her sprayer. 
So we use, um, what is it called? What's our sprayer called? Is it a home right? Home right sprayer? Super cheap on Amazon. They're like 70 bucks or $120. They have two models. I've used both of them. They're both fantastic. But you can uh, get the sprayer. You can spray paint. Any of our paints can spray through them beautifully. You can also spray the top coats. And the first time I sprayed top coat, I thought that I was entering heaven. I mean, it was it was truly amazing. So obviously you don't wanna spray while you're inside the house unless you like tape everything off. I have actually sprayed inside of a client's house before, but she was getting her rugs and her um, paint was all getting changed. So it was like a wall unit. So I taped everything off in the room so that it was just me and the <laughs> the um, wall unit and my very large respirator mask. Don't get angry with me. And I sprayed and it was, it came out beautifully. But if you are, if you, if you don't have that opportunity to, to tape everything off, then just, you know, you can just transport it outside and quickly spray it. But you will get like the most professional looking finish with a sprayer. So another way to get a smooth finish and not a streaky finish with the top coats, couple, couple tips. So number one, if you're doing a flat top coat, over a dark color, you don't want to do more than one coat because you will start to get a little bit of a haze that builds up in there. So here's a tip. If you're doing a dark color paint, do like a couple layers of say satin or gloss top coat first and then make your last layer flat and that will give you a better finish. You won't get haze, as much haze. And then the other thing is we do have a paint pad that we carry in the store. It's like a little styrofoam pad that you hold. And this is what I like to do. And I, now that I'm saying this, I, I feel like we have done a video, but if we haven't, we'll, we will definitely do one. So I actually pour top coat onto a plate like this. And then the paint pad is about this big. So we actually dip, I dip the paint pad into the plate with all the top coat. I flip it over and I take a brush and I brush it so that I get a really nice even coat of top coat on there. And then I take that and I go, I do like two or three sh streaks like across whatever surface I'm doing. And then I refill the paint pad until like when I'm I'm doing it, it's, it's not sh streaking anymore. Here's the other thing. You wanna make sure that you're applying a heavy enough coat that it looks a little bit milky. So I think sometimes, like I know when I first started using the top coat, I wanted to apply not as much. And I feel that you don't get quite as a, a, um, a smooth finish because it needs, it needs to tighten down. So even, I've been amazed, like sometimes I've sprayed it and it looks so thick and gloppy, but then when it's it dries, it's completely gone and it's totally flat. So you want it to be kind of liberal where you're leaving a li like it has a little bit of a milky film to it. If it's too thin, then sometimes I do get, it does look a little bit streaky. Um, so that would be, that would be my tip. My tips about top coat. Anything else? Let's see. What other questions do we have in here? We've linked a couple of the products that I've talked about um, onto into the comments. We have all our videos are up there. I think that's everything. I think that's everything. So I'm really... I'm amazed. I'm like watching the number on here. I can't believe how many of you joined us today. This was fantastic. I feel so honored that you came and spent some time with me today. So we're going to be doing this a little bit more often now because what else do we have to do? <laughs> so we're going to actually be doing this again tomorrow. I haven't decided on the time yet, probably around the same time, around two o'clock. And I'm going to be doing a house tour. So I have to go because I need to clean my house. <laughs> um, I'm going to be walking you through my house and just showing you a bunch of the things that I have done with the products that we carry in the store. And I'm going to show you, you know, how I really do these things for my own home, which isn't always exactly the way that I tell you how to do them at home because I want to tell you the right way, but I also like shortcuts. I've always told you I'm a lazy DIYer. So... 
Um, yeah, so we're going to be coming to you tomorrow. We'll definitely send out an email tonight to let you guys know exactly what time. We will definitely post, but probably around the same time at 2 o'clock. And tomorrow I am going to be taking you into my closet, which is one of my favorite places in the house. I told you I have a very modest home. It's not a big closet, but it's my closet, and I love it. And I figure that if I love on it, enough that maybe someday God will give me a much larger closet. <laughs> I'm also going to show you Madison's room. So she's two and a half now and we've beaten up on all of her stuff for two and a half years. So you'll get to see, you know, how everything is holding up. And there are a couple things that aren't holding up great. So I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you those things tomorrow. And uh, what else? I'm going to I'm going to show you the basement, too. So next week, we're going to be doing finishing on two pieces in the basement. I'm going to show you my cabinets. So I'll do a little bit of cabinet painting with you. And then I also have a credenza down there, which is actually the counter from our Brooklyn store from our when we had our Brooklyn store back in the day. So now it's in my laundry room and it needs a refresh. And what other color? should we refresh it with then pink. So I'm really excited to do that. We did a vanity set at the store in this beautiful pink, which we matched to the Benjamin Moore color of the year, which is first light. It's beautiful blushy pink. So I'm gonna be doing that same color on the credenza in the basement. So we'll be doing that next week. So tomorrow is the house tour. So come on back and visit me. And then Monday, we're going to be doing basement, basement painting, which I'm really, really excited about. So I hope you guys have a great day. I hope you enjoy the rest of the day. Get outside, smell that fresh air, drink your water. I'm drinking my water. And um, who has done some physical activity today? Have you, have you, you know, stretched out? Even spend five minutes just stretching your body. It feels so good to move around for sure. And uh I'll talk to you guys soon. You know, if you have any tips for me on how to get your baby to poop, I really appreciate it. So she's like petrified to actually go poop. So it's not even about that it's not soft anymore. <laughs> this is so gross. But it's she's like actually afraid to get on the potty. So any tips, I'd be happy to hear them. Oh, Mary did Pilates. I love it. I love it. All right, guys, I'll see you soon. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. Want to learn more?